everyone, I'm Christine, and you are listening to Uni Life with Canvas Nottingham. On this podcast, we like to talk about life and faith, and one way in which we do that is by inviting friends to join us and tell a little bit about their story in life and the way that faith has shown up. In that, and this week, I am excited to introduce to you my friend, Charlotte. Many of you probably have met Charlotte through Canvas, but if you haven't, she is currently a PhD student at the University of Nottingham, and I'm so excited that she's here today. Hey, Charlotte. How's it going? It's going well, thank you. Sweet. Um, so for starters, what, tell everyone what you're studying or doing your PhD on. I am a physicist in pharmacy. I Mm -hmm. am doing a PhD in materials for different biological applications or medical applications. Um, I basically poke stuff and make bubbles (laughs) and hope that that's useful. Um, It sounded so, um studious and uh impressive and then you said that you poke things and make bubbles yeah I like to give the reality you know (laughs) well-rounded view (laughs) sweet so we'll get into that more later but first for starters um how like where did life begin for you where did you grow up what was it like Take us back to the very beginning. So a long, long, long time ago. Um, So I am relatively local. Uh, So I live on, I live, I mean, in Nottingham. But originally I am from the Derbyshire Nottingham border. Just near Ikea for locals reference. Yep. Um, Yep. So I have a sister who is about six years older than me. Um, I live with, I lived with my mum and my dad there. Um, about the time my sister went to uni, uh, my mum and dad split up. So then I lived just with me and my mum, and we became a little partnership, partners in crime. Um, and I live on a little lane that is contains my grandma and what has become our extended family and is this super cute little bubble um, that I nearly never left. Um, so yeah, and then I did. And then I came to Nottingham to do my degree in physics. And then I stayed forever. Um, (laughs) Yeah, you did. Yeah, and I nearly finished my PhD, which is a bit scary, um, here as well. Nice. So back to your sister, there's something really interesting uh, that she's into. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So for her wedding present, they got alpacas. They are up to 14, I think, as of a couple of weeks ago. Wow. Yeah, um, with the idea that they, they do meet and greets on Zoom at the moment, um, but they do alpaca trekking and weddings and such things with them. And they are like giraffe sheep that make <laughs> cat noises. <laughs> they, they meow and bleat and they're really weird, um, but they're so fluffy and cute. that they're, they're fabulous. That's awesome. I still really want to get to meet them at some point in time. Absolutely. The new one is so soft. Oh, how exciting. So back to life on the lane. Yeah. You were talking about how you thought maybe you would never leave and spend your whole life on the lane. Yeah. But you didn't. Here you are in Nottingham. So what happened? Take us back to that time. I always wanted to go to university. I didn't know what I was going to do. But, you know, from hey, university is a thing. I was like, I'm, I'm going. Um, but I've also always struggled with anxiety. Um, and as it got closer and closer to going to uni, uh, so after A-levels, when you get that gloriously long summer, um, I say I had my mum, obviously, I lived at the house, so she was there. Um, my grandma and our neighbour, who I also worked for, So I could go weeks without actually leaving the little road that I lived on. And they were getting a bit worried when it came to time for me to move that I was actually not going to go um, because I was getting smaller and smaller world. And 
my comfort zone was getting a lot smaller as well. And they're like, she's not going to leave. It's going to have to be an intervention. <laughs> Um, so was there an intervention or how did you end up leaving to go to uni? So I went, everybody cried. Um, I cried, they cried. Um, we agreed that I would do the first week and see how that went. And then I survived. So we agreed that I'd do the first month until it got to the first year. And then, well, at that point, I will stay. And whew, before you know it, you've, done enough that you can't justify leaving and you're happy now so yeah so you stay for the full four years and then sign up for another four <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so easy when you say it like that if if only this is this is the the joy of having you know many years past to forget, mm -hmm. to forget the hard bits so one step at a time you you made it to this point very much one one very small step at a time so what helped you stick with it other than breaking it down to small, manageable periods of time that you committed to? What else helped you during your first year at uni? So the day I moved in, I did what they all say you don't do, which is meet your best friend um, who we are. Yeah, we, I think we've decided we're basically sisters from another mister, except not cool enough to pull that off. Um, so I had awesome friends that I made that I were in the same block um, and they were so supportive, um, but also having a really supportive network back home that I knew that if I was finding it really hard, I could just call and they'd always be there to talk to. Or if it was really, really bad and I just needed to sort of get out and get out of my head as well, then I could go home on like an hour and an hour I'd be back at the front door on the bus um, and there'd be a dog, there'd be a pony, not my pony, but there would be fluffy things there to cuddle and an endless supply of chocolate biscuits from my grandma. Um, so yeah, any time, day or night, they made it very clear that I could just ring if I was struggling or sad and that sort of support was, was, was everything really, it gets you through. Yeah, I think the value of knowing people are accessible in times of help is so beneficial for sure. Yeah. So what are some things that you are interested in outside of uni? So as I say, I love my fluffy critters. Um, so I horse ride and I have always played music. And one of the reasons I came to Nottingham was that I could carry on with the groups and stuff I was in. Um, and since last year, I now do kickboxing because, hey, why not? Um, I needed something that wasn't the gym because I didn't go mm -hmm. um, to, to try and lose that lockdown weight. Um, but yeah, those are sort of the main. And outside, outside. I love outside. I am growing my little seedlings that may or may not actually do anything. That's a fun assortment of interest, for sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a collection. <laughs> so you made it through first year, yep. and you, you carried on with undergrad. How did the rest of that experience go? So I think I had the same experience that most physics students go through in the, the first and second year. You are so completely out of your depth. You feel super lost and you begin to hate the course and wonder why on earth you ever chose to do science. Um, I got to the end of my second year and was having a chat with one of my friends who was like, well, I was really struggling, but you were doing fine. I just thought you'd got it all together. And if you can do it, then I can do it. And I was like, no, no, no. I've been looking at you going, you can do it. Therefore, I can do it. And it turned out that had been how we both made it through two years without actually telling each other that. Um, and the, it turns out everybody hated those first two years, which no one admitted to until they were safely behind them. Um, but after that, it got better. So um, I took on more stuff because, yeah, if you're stressed and worried, then the answer is obviously to take on more responsibilities and do more work because then it's fine. Um, so... Yeah, my third and fourth years, I took on managing uh, music, 
groups within the society, uh, education rep work, uh, faculty rep stuff. Um, yeah, if there was an opportunity to just add work to my plate, I was doing it. Um, yeah, including sort of the teaching placement, uh, which I nearly didn't get to go to because uh, the week before I went back for my third year, I broke my back. Wow. Um, what a big life event. How did that happen? So unsurprisingly, I fell off a horse. Um, as with most injuries in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, I fell off a horse. I hit the floor wrong and it went crack. Um, I was very lucky that it was a very stable fracture in sort of the middle. So I wasn't in any danger, but I was super restricted on what I could do for sort of three months um, while in a giant metal back brace. Um, but yeah, not, not a fetching item to wear. Wow. Sure. I bet. So what did that season of your life look like? Did you stay at uni? Did What happened? So in that time, I moved back home because I literally couldn't look after myself, which sounds super melodramatic. Um, I could do things, but as long as they didn't involve bending, turning, lifting, uh, stretching, you know, any of those movements that you do on a daily basis. Um, I didn't put my socks on by myself for a good four months, I think, um, which isn't something you can ask your housemates to do. Um, so I moved home um, and my mum, being relatively local, brought me in for my lectures every day and then either her or my neighbours would pick me up from lectures, drop me at home, I'd work while I went back to work. Um, and yeah, and that's kind of how it carried on until Christmas time. So yeah, I was paying rent and everything and having a lovely, really, really nice empty room back in Nottingham. Yeah, I think one upside of terrible, unfortunate life events like those are that typically they have the opportunity to teach us something. Was there anything that you learned during that experience in your life? Yeah, I think it made me like, First of all, it made me swear never to take for granted that I can move and do things like that. Um, I remember the first night in hospital being terrified because it was a Sunday night, so I didn't get my CT scans or anything until the morning. And so they're literally like, we don't know where it's broken, don't move, or you could tear something and it'd be really bad. So, yeah, I don't take for granted sort of the ability to just do day-to-day -day things. But also I became super thankful for the support from my friends. Um, so when I went back to lectures, I wasn't allowed to carry anything. Um, so, yeah, they were just carrying my water bottle and my pencil case and a notebook. And, you know, adding that into the, the stuff they were they were carrying around wasn't necessarily a big thing for them. But for me, it meant the difference between not being able to go to uni that year um, and being able to carry on studying. Um, and obviously, yeah, my mum taking the time out to sort of be late for work and them all rearranging schedules so that she could drop me off and then come pick me up. But it was never, there was never a question of it. it she was always just like, yeah, we'll sort it. Everything will be fine. We will find a way. It's all good. Um, so yeah, which, are, yeah, super appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good reminder to know that small acts that we choose to do in our lives can have a very large impact on somebody else's life. Sometimes they can seem a bit um, insignificant in the moment, but it's helpful to hear from somebody in hindsight, the impact that those made in your life. Yeah. Yeah. What role did faith play when you were growing up? Um, so, like a lot of people, I went to Church of England primary school. Um, you know, we had our assemblies, we sang the songs, we had the fun little lessons as to what happened in the Bible with guests that, I let's be honest, I remember the people that did the stories more than what the stories were themselves. Um, we had a guy with a puppet, 
a guy that painted scenes as he talked them through. I mean, it's like a, a 10 year old's dream assembly. Um, we went to church for sort of the main events. Um, when I was very young, I'd go to church on a Sunday morning with my grandma. Um, probably realistically, I, I was, I, I'm, was old enough to remember that we went, but not actually that anything happened there. Um, I liked that we got to go and sing together. But yeah, that was kind of it. You know, you tick the box saying you're Christian because you grew up going to Church of England school and Church of England church. Um, on the special days, your parents would say that they are too, even though they probably really actually didn't take any more of an active role in it than that at that point time either. Um, but didn't really think anything more of it. Um, I joined the choir at church, um, and that was always my favourite time of year, and the candlelight service we did. And every year I would swear, next year, I am going to come to church in between Christmas and Easter and Christmas, and actually do something about this, and find out what it's all about, and join in, and all that stuff and obviously never never did because life would get in the way or I'd forget and somehow we'd be back to Christmas. So yeah. It was it was there. I lit so I for context live there is my garden and there is the church. There is a main road in between. The church bells used to wake me up on a Sunday. It is a looming shadow literally in in our house. And yet yeah, no, never actually go there. Um, unless there's something on. So regardless of the fact that it was really accessible and convenient and the fact that you decided to call yourself a Christian, you your level of engagement was very low. Yeah. I mean, it was there. It's a nice building. The people that are there are, are my mom's friends from when she was a child. Look, aren't these people nice? But that is it. That is, yep. that is as far as it went. So when you got to uni, was that still the same? Did you still consider yourself to be a Christian? Yeah, I think during my undergrad, I never really gave it much more thought. I carried on doing the Christmas, the Easter, the Christmas, the Easter, and nothing in between. Um, but it did, I think towards the end, it did start to sort of be like, what, what are you doing? You know, when I'd go over, say, for whatever fundraising event, I was like, come on, you need to, you need to like, Give this a shot. Find out what's going on. What? Where are you standing on on all of this? Mm -hmm. um, How did you get connected to or find out about Canvas? So I first heard of Canvas on the last day of my undergraduate. Um, so I had some friends who uh, I still have have them. Um, they they've not gone. Um, who were a part of Canvas from the beginning. Um, but, you know, we were close, but I didn't live with them. I didn't see them every day. So anyway, end of year celebration for Canvas, about an hour before on the last day of term. Hey, do you want to come to this thing? Uh, I was like, well, no, because it's an hour before and it's the last day of term. So I have things going on. But I happened to then the next year go live with one of those. Uh, that person being Emma, who is the Canvas poster girl. <laughs> um, I think, you know, she's the original before, before it happened, kind of. Yep. Um, so, yeah, she said, oh, she was off to one of these events. I was like, oh, no, been not inviting me. Okay, cool. I will stay at home. Um, and then I was hoping that she'd invite me because I wanted to. But I didn't want to ask her if I could come because then it would sound like I was being a creep and following her around. Um, and then it turned out that she didn't want to ask me because she didn't want to seem like a needy creep who was dragging me everywhere. Um, but eventually we did. Uh, I say eventually, it was like a week later. Um, but things happen quickly. So yes, Emma invited me to this thing which she described as organised fun. And I was like, I am totally down for organised fun. Please. Love it. I, if, if we can play childhood games, I am even more there because I am secretly seven. Um, and she's like, this food? I was like, yeah, okay, you sold it. It's fine. So that is the point where we went to our first 7-Eleven and did the murder mystery. And I was so down for it. 
it was fabulous. That was a very fun event. I remember it myself. So at that point in time, did you know that Canvas was ran by Christians? Yeah, so she'd mentioned it in sort of the, the preamble of, you might not like this, it's maybe not for everybody, but it's a really cool thing. And, you know, that whole spiel of, oh, please don't hate it, I really like it. Um, yeah, that it, was, that it was a Christian thing, but not like super Christian was, I think, what the way it was sort of phrased. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. So I'm imagining it's not going to be like, here, read this leaflet. It will change your life. All, all Book of Mormony. But I was like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I don't think that they're going to try and, you know, sign me up for a cult. That was the impression, you know, so it's sent safe. So yeah, um, I was just sort of expecting it to be, you know, a fairly PG sort of games night. But yeah, it was... It was not. Um, <laughs> so you took the risk and yeah. you went and what was your experience of it? So it was just super fun and just such a nice break from early PhD life, which turns out is the slightly less ver stressful version of the rest of PhD life, but seems worse. Um, so everything was so stressful and all the friends that we'd had for four years had gone away. Um, so it was just this really nice, relaxing evening full of fun where you didn't have to think, oh, I need to be trying to be professional and make a good impression. You were like, hey, I'm going to be this character today because it's a murder mystery. And that's not weird to then be a strange character. Um, and meet other people who are also mildly stressed and are up for making friends. Um, because let's be honest, you start your PhD and it's not like when you start your undergrad. There aren't like these events to be like, friends. It's like, you are a grown up. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. So yeah, it was great. It was really fun. And I think for the most of that semester, 7-Eleven was sort of a regular occurrence for us. Yep, for sure. So you're at this point in time where you consider yourself to be a Christian. You're kind of beginning to wonder like what actually does this entail where do you go from there so yeah this had sort of been building up more and more and sort of well well there's this whole resource of canvas so hmm, maybe that's interesting um emma i say was in a similar position that she'd relatively recently re rejoined uh christianity if that's how you phrase that and started going to church and so sort of general chit chat in the kitchen was along uh not all the time but one of the in between hamilton recitals was uh about about religion and what is the shindig and i was sort of wanting to try and explore that more I was like well, i've got time somewhere um and now seems like a really good opportunity to try and work out what i i tick a box that says christian on the forms uh, I don't know what that means. I barely remember, other than, again, the Christmas story, the Easter story, the feeding of the 5,000, you know, the big ones. What what happens in, in Bible? Who was Jesus? And all of that. Um, and sort of not understanding any of that or knowing what that meant and what that meant to me. Yeah. Um, and I think it's around that time that, by wonderful coincidence, we had girls group, um, where a few of us got together with you and Tabby and uh, had some dinner and uh, attempted to read some of the Bible and discuss it, um, which we did at great length, not necessarily in the uh, most linear fashion. Yep, I would have to agree with that. <laughs> what value was added by exploring that? together in a group setting so i think the main thing made it actually accessible so um i'd previously uh, my home church is a high church style church so you don't ask questions it's not that you can't it's just you you, you wouldn't why would you uh, these are all well-established christians that know what they're doing um 
whereas what was really nice was um, so being able to discuss that in a really relaxed environment with other people who also had the same sort of questions like why are they saying this why does that make any sense um and being able to then ask those questions rather than them all going around your head getting hung up on it and find out hey the shoes are really important because historical context and things like that it made it a lot more accessible in terms of understanding and being able to ask those questions rather than feeling like you need to have the answers before you can read it rather than reading it to get the answer. So it created a safe space for you to kind of own the fact that you didn't know so much and that you wanted to explore some answers to some of the questions you had. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as well, it made it fun rather than super intimidating. Because let's be honest, there is a lot of Bible. There is a lot of, of knowledge about Christianity that where do you begin? Um, and, you know, you begin with a cheese based dinner and friends, and then it's a lot easier to get through. Definitely. Cheese based dinner and friends. I mean, oh. come on, I'm here for it. So since then, you've kind of continued on this journey of exploring faith yeah 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 at least i've i've tried i would say you definitely have yep where after girls group where else have you shown up to explore faith so um on and off we've carried on sort of exploring things around that um and the occasional meetings of each other and occasionally we even get around to discussing faith rather than our new knitting projects um and then also back when i was still living with emma i tried going to trinity um it was scary people are very enthusiastic but intimidating because they were all really happy um as i say my church not so much they're lovely people but they are all over the age of 70 and very, very serious and somber. Um, so, yeah, that was an experience, which I think I liked, but it was an experience. And then more recently, we have taken part in Alpha course at Trinity. For somebody who doesn't know what Alpha is, how would you describe it? So Alpha is like the non-terrifying version of doing a course in something really big and scary. Um, I think it's kind of what you wished a lot of lessons would have been like at school. So you face really big questions, but you do it in a super relaxed way. You watch some videos um, which are like, what is Christianity? Or why do Christians think this thing? Um, this is a thing. This is what the we how we follow that or what that means to our lives um so you watch that and then in a nice little group you get to discuss those really big and meaningful questions in life without sort of feeling super pressured or like you have to have a real answer most of my answers are turn out to be questions that are barely phrased in english most of the time because of trying to get those thoughts out of my head but there's no judgment in that um, and everybody's sort of in a similar position, even though they come from wildly different uh, walks of life or experiences with faith already. What would you say that you've personally learned thus far from attending Alpha? So the main thing I've learned and that has kind of filtered into every other aspect that we've learned from Alpha is that faith is a two-way relationship it's not sort of a spectator sport um or i watch sport um it's not you know you don't just turn your sunday service on like a netflix show and expect to suddenly understand everything and have developed this really strong connection to faith it's something you actually have to actively participate in and it's a relationship like nowhere i think in sort of learning things at school did it ever come across that this is a relationship rather than there is God, there is you. 
whereas it's like there's both of you you can talk to each other um and within that it's then made sort of the exploration of that and even trying to understand things a lot more accessible um a lot less intimidating because you don't have to know those things it's it's like meeting a new person but it's, it takes both of you to get there rather than just sort of stalking them by watching videos about them you actually have to have that conversation yeah earlier you mentioned church being scary when you went it sounded like that was because the church you had attended off and on growing up was very different to the church than that you visited in Nottingham. Yeah. Absolutely. Has attending Alpha at Trinity changed or influenced your view of church in any way? Yeah, I think it sort of shows how different different churches are. So it's not just one blanket. Church of England, all churches are like this. Catholic, all churches are like this. It's not. And also that you can have, it, as a result of that, you can then have the relationship with God that's personal to you. Um, so I think it was discussed in the lesson session about prayer, um, where, you know, they were saying that, yes, yeah, some, some people are really, this is a very strict, we're followed along these guidelines. And other people are like, no, I listen to music. Um, and then it feels like a little chat afterwards and we listen that way. And similarly, when we had the session on the Holy Spirit, that, you know, it's unique to you and the environment that you choose to go to with that then is something that matches you and your relationship. So it doesn't have to be as formal, but equally you don't have to be all excited and dancing around if that's also not what kind of works for you. So what I hear you saying is that similar to each relationship being unique in our lives based on who they're with, the way in which we engage with faith, it being a relationship can also look different based on the person who's engaging with yeah. it. Yeah. So would you say anything has changed at this point in time in regards to your view on faith in Christianity? I think I'm a lot more open to understanding things, which I didn't realize that I wasn't before. So to me, I thought I was going in to all this whole process being quite open. Um, but in learning that actually, no, you have to actively be open rather than just say, yeah, tell me stuff. I feel like it's easier to sort of access different parts of, of, of faith to understand that a bit better as well. Um, so like previously, I thought if you prayed, you know, it has to be a very formal, dear God, today, this is a beautiful morning, and so on, so on. Um, whereas actually, no, yeah, you know, you and him, you get to have this chat in whatever way works for you. And I don't know if I'm doing it right. Who knows? Because um, it's all in my head um, that, that the words are said. But whether or not I am or whether or not anything's happening, at least it's I feel calmer and more peaceful. Um, and, and maybe that's just because, you know, you pray in the morning, um, you start off saying like thank you for different things and that puts you in a better frame of mind because you're sort of appreciating what's around you and then you know, you're asking for help for whatever's going to be happening in the day and sort of that helps prepare you mentally and understand that and put you in the right frame of mind um so even if then nothing's like going through and nothing's happening in ethereal world at least i feel like i'm more peaceful and more understanding um but i also have more confidence to actually just open the bible start reading a thing it's not gonna bite it's not a book of monsters let's do it so as you have 
engaged your openness to faith has increased over time? Yeah. Have you faced challenges or hurdles as you've tried to engage with faith recently? Yeah, I think the main thing is trying to put aside that time to actively engage. So it's, again, it's not like, oh, I can just stick last Sunday's service on on the TV and I'll watch it while I'm doing this other work, right? Because that's how, you know, normally I would do things. But it's making that time to actively engage and then making that into a routine and trying to stick with it that is hard for any sort of trying to form a habit. That's, that's sort of the, the thing that I've been struggling with. Is there something you've been trying to include in your daily routine? Um, yeah, so for Lent, I'm trying to do a psalm a day, which is a, is a little group we said we'd, we'd do, which also helps hold us accountable. And sort of just taking that few minutes a day, sort of at a regular time to open the Bible. And then I also find that once I've opened it and read that psalm, then, hey, maybe I've got a little bit longer. I'll have a, have a nosy at this other book. Or see what was said over here. So yeah, small small steps again. Yep, I think small steps are the way to go for sure. What would you say to either Charlotte eight years ago, pre uni, pre exploring faith intentionally, or somebody who's in a similar season of life who may be listening and thinking like, huh? I'm not sure about all that faith stuff. What would you say to them? That I think you've got nothing to lose in exploring it. Like if you find that it's not for you, then all you've done is sort of find out a bit more about yourself. If you find out that it's this world changing experience and you, you know, it changes your life, then amazing. Um, but really you've got nothing to lose and it's not as scary and intimidating as as it seems and I guess also people don't know it's the it's the same as your course and everything else nobody actually knows what's going on and it's okay to ask them they look like they have it together not necessarily it's so true no one has it all together and everyone I think in life is on a journey of trying to learn and grow and figure things out. And so I would just echo that and invite you or encourage you to take a step, whatever that small step is in progressing down the journey that you're on. So at the end of every episode, Charlotte, we wrap up with five rapid fire questions. Are you ready for these? I I am. Yes. Awesome. So the first one is complete the sentence. Community is a sense of family that's not necessarily your family. They could be strangers, but they're not strangers anymore. Yep. What is I know this is a sensitive question for you in particular. What's your favorite takeaway? I miss takeaway. I miss it so much. Um, it's the thing I've given up for land because we were living on it. But I also have a controversial favourite takeaway, which, which we, which I think is fabulous. So I like the really deep, gooey pizzas that you get from not proper pizza places. So scrap the Domino's and Papa John's. Go to your kebab shop. <laughs> those, those ones. Um, but I, my favourite thing is to get those from curry places or tandoori places and have it with onion barges because that is the best of two worlds pizza and onion barges yeah you probably heard it here first folks so go try it out let us know what you think what's something you've binged recently bones um yeah so i am on season 11 of 12 whoa and yeah I know so much about forensic anthropology now that I could basically solve all the crimes. Um, oh. There's bones that I didn't know existed. Um, but yeah, it's the way to go. Nice. What's something that you are currently grateful for? 
I am currently grateful for the fact that we now have sunshine. Um, <laughs> yay! Yesterday was the first real day of sun and I went in my garden and I tidied up the vegetable beds and I sowed my first seedlings and I'm just super grateful that it's... The sky is starting to be more hopeful, the world is starting to be more hopeful and everything just feels a little bit warmer. I could not agree more. All right, last but not least, a would you rather question. Would you rather travel to a different country every time you farted or travel back in time 20 years every time you sneezed? No, you do not get to choose where you go. Huh. I would go with sneezing. Definitely. Yeah. Any reason why? Yeah, I just think it'd be more interesting to go back in time because that's not something you get to do, whereas you can choose to go to another country. It's true. Great answer. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining me this week on the podcast, Charlotte. You are welcome. Thank you for having me. Definitely. And thank you to everyone who has been listening to this episode of Uni Life with Canvas Nottingham. Follow us on social media. We're on Instagram and Facebook at Canvas Nottingham. There we post all of our upcoming events and podcast discussion, which happens every week. Thanks. Bye.